Hey everyone, uh, good evening. So I saw quite a few questions come up on this, uh, on the normal distribution and what are the valid range of numbers to sample from and all. And that made me realize that maybe the concept of what a normal distribution is, is not clear for you guys. So I thought that I'll do a video regarding that because it's really important in statistics to understand what a normal distribution is and how to work with it. All right. So let's uh, get to it. So before we go into a normal distribution, let's understand what a histogram is first, right? So now on Colab, um, let me just uh, uh, restart everything, right? So uh, as you can see, I'm following good habits, right? I'm, I have all my imports on top and then let me just upload. Uh, so there's this one file which uh, I downloaded from the internet and I'm going to plot it. So this basically explains what a histogram is, right? So histogram is a graph where on the X axis you have something called bins, right? Uh, and on the Y axis, you have count. So think about it this way, right? Like if I asked you at this point in your wallet, look into your wallet and tell me what are the number of different nodes you have, right? So suppose you can see this graph over here. Suppose you have, you have two single dollar bills, right? So the count of the single dollar bills will be two, right? So this is your count. Right. If you and if you have one five dollar bill, then it's this. You have one ten dollar bill, and for some reason you have a lot of you have four twenty dollar bills, right? So you see how this histogram helps us keep count of different things. So these are the items, right? And the count is on this axis. So similarly, the items need not be just a very a single thing it can you can have it within the range right so that is exactly what the uh, histogram uh, in the collab notebook is showing so you have a range of different things and anything which falls in this range we increase the count of that by one so and remember the y-axis of a histogram will always uh, be integers right because you can count uh, count as an integer thing okay so now why do so what is a normal distribution, right? So let's see how this thing came about. So let me upload a data set, which I found of height, right? Uh, yes, got that. Okay. So I'm going to load that data set now. And as a good data scientist, I will always do df.head to see what my data set looks like. So I have over here gender, height and weight. So I don't care about anything except the height. So I'm going to just work with that. So let me just print out some stats of, uh, the data set of the height column, right? So basic stats are like the minimum, maximum, the mean and the standard deviation, right? So if you see the minimum height is 54 inches, the maximum height is 78 inches, 79, almost 79. The mean height is 66 inches and the standard deviation in the height is 3.84. So instead of, so the most important stats over here, I would say are the mean and the standard deviation and I'll show you why. So why don't we do a histogram of the heights, right? Like we have a range of certain heights, let's say everything from uh, this to this height, we put it in this bin, right? Um, so let's, let's do a plot of that. So as you can see, I've selected the number of bins to be 34. I just selected this arbitrarily. You can select it more and uh, this, so basically this plots the histogram for me. And as you can see, right, it forms like this bell shaped curved, right? So turns out that back in the day, I think it was like 20 years back, when st mathematicians started plotting a lot of things and they started doing the histograms, this shape started showing up a lot. And then mathematicians made a model for it and they call this the normal distribution. And that's why it's called the bell shaped curved, right? So if you look back at our, um, stats right from here can you look at the mean and the the mean value the mean let's say 66.36 so if you look at the bins on the x axis you can see that that is literally the center a value of the center bin right so you can see that in a way the mean of your data is what decides the center point of your normal distribution so now let's go ahead and let's look at this one thing, right? So 
why is the normal distribution hold a lot of weight? So as you can see on my screen right now, that everything, so if you see on the X axis, they've removed the bins and they've just uh, put values of the mu of the mean, which is represented by mu and the standard deviation, which is by sigma. They've just put that. So anything which is one within one standard deviation, that means plus sigma and minus sigma so on either sides, that covers 68.27% of your data. Okay. And anything which is two standard deviations away. So if you go a little farther from your mean, two standard deviations away from mean on either side, that should cover 95% of your data. And if you go three standard deviations, that should cover 99.73% of your data. So you see how within three standard deviations, you almost covered all your data. And just within one standard deviation, you've covered almost a third, almost two thirds of your data points, right? So this is the beauty of the uh, normal distribution that if, so basically what this distribution tells us is that, so let's look back at the height, right? So it tells us that you will find that when you pick random people from a group on an average, their height will be the mean value of the height. Okay. And if you have a whole country, right? So this, this data set has like thousand has heights of thousand people. So you can see that on an average, you have almost all the data, which is two thirds of the data centered within one standard deviation, right? Like everybody's approximately 66, uh, inches. So let's see how much that is in feet, right? 66 inches to feet. Okay. So almost roughly the average population is a, has a height of 5.5 foot and then plus or minus, uh, 3.4, right? So that makes it 69.4 and that is 5.7 feet or you go back and let's say just 63 for round. So 5.25 feet, right? So, more six, two thirds of the people fall in two the height of two thirds of the people fall in this this in this uh, distribution and the rest is over there. So you see how this forms a distribution of your data, right? So it's distributing your data and it's telling you, hey, this is if you just randomly take a person, the mean value is what you'll probably find or somewhere around it, and then as you go away from the mean it is lesser likely to find it because the counts of those will be lesser. So let's verify this, right? So now in these two lines, which I'm executing right now, I'm just selecting all the data, which is within one standard deviation of my mean, right? And this is what I did. And so now let me calculate the length of the number of data points, which fall within this. And let me divide it by the length of the original data set, which is a thousand points and multiplied by hundred to get a percentage of the points, right? So you can see this 65.27%. Now you might ask me, Hey, Adnan, you know what you told me is going to be 68.27. Well, the image shown over here is that of a mathematical model. So this is what it should be if you use complete math, but the real world never always fits exactly into mathematical models. That's why it's an approximation always. So, but you see, it comes quite close. I mean, this pretty little quite well, right? So this is what a normal distribution is. Okay. So now if you want to sample normal distribution, so if you look, uh, at, uh, so let's, let's generate some normal data of our own, right? So I'm, I'm not going to say normal distribution anymore. I'll just say normal data by that. I mean, data, which comes from a normal distribution. So let's generate. So in this line over here, I'm using np.random.randn. So rand stands for random and n is for the normal and the thousand over here, I think it is a hundred thousand. So I'm generating a hundred thousand points, which I'm sampling from a normal distribution. Now, so for rand n by default, it will sample points from a normal distribution, which has mean zero and standard deviation of one, right? And then I'm just going to plot it with, 84 bins in it. So you see, it is, it is almost as good as a normal distribution. So you know what, let's, let's, uh, reduce the number to say a hundred, right? Ah, it doesn't make sense because I have too many bins. So let me reduce the number of bins. So you see, even with lesser data, it, 
kind of follows that trend but if you really wanted to show up you need a little more data and you need a little more bins so you see immediately you can see that shape come up again so whenever someone asks you to sample from a normal distribution and they don't give you any other data about it you can safely assume that you have to sample from a normal distribution which has zero mean right so as you can see from the bins the mean is zero over here and standard deviation of one now say somebody says hey you know what uh, i want the mean so if you think about it uh if you look at the next code block you only need two stats to summarize a normal distribution and that's the best part you just need a mean which tells you the location of your normal distribution right where you want it centered on the x-axis and the standard deviation which says how much you want it to spread out right so now let's play with these values a bit. So if you want to have your own custom location and uh, standard deviation, you can use np.random.normal. So you see, so now the location, so this is a function which will generate data for you. And the location keyword is basically the mean, right? The location and the scale is the standard deviation and the size is the number of data points you want, right? So this can, I can even put it in a 2D numpy array, but I'm just doing it in a 1D numpy array. So let's see this. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. So now let's play around with the scale, right? So let's say the scale, make it like four. Or let's make it like 40 for that matter. So if you see, uh, I think, it, oh, okay. So pay attention to the X axis now, right? So I'm bringing the scale back to one. So you see this X axis right now, on either sides, the maximum is minus four to four, right? But now if I increase the scale to say 40, do you see how the data has spread even more? And now the X axis goes from minus 150 to 150. So it's like we are spreading out the data more, right? We are scale, we are allowing it to go, uh, go along a bigger range. So let's go the other way, right? Let's drop it down to like say 0 0.1. So you see how the scale of the x-axis now went from just from 0 0.4 to 4, but you see the shape still stays and that's important. So the shape will almost be like a bell curve in a normal distribution and you can even change the location. So let's play with the location. Let's put it at three, right? So now you have the x-axis, you see the center of the normal distribution is at three. And then there's a scale over there, right? Like, so this is the main thing which you need to take back from a normal distribution. So, uh, I think in, uh, in the assignment, it says that, you know what, uh, sample points from a normal distribution. So you can either use np.random.randn if your location is zero and scale is one, but if you want to change that, then you have to use np.random.normal. And, uh, I hope this clarifies what a histogram is what a normal distribution is and how do you sample from a normal distribution. So awesome.